Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Christian Tu. Uh, I'm actually from Houston. Uh, thank you very much for uh, letting me speak to you guys today. Uh, first off, as an emergency room physician, I want to say I'm really sorry for calling at 1 in the morning. It's not my fault, I promise. Uh, I need you, I appreciate you, but nobody really likes emergency medicine for the most part because we never get to talk to you, you know, say, hey, let's have a drink, let's get together. It's always, I have work for you, 2 in the morning, I have work for you. So today I'd like to talk about managing emergent bleeds, emergent bleeds involving direct oral anticoagulants. A couple objectives that we want to talk about. I want to go over a couple of important properties for direct oral anticoagulants specific for the emergency department. I want to talk about a few of the reversal agents that we use for DOAX. Approach of the management of a patient on bleeding on DOAX in the emergency department. And we're going to go over a couple of easy clinical cases. <clears throat> Reviewing the menu, uh, the DOAC that's uh, FDA approved and clinically used in practice, uh, I want to show you a couple of interesting characteristics that are very important to the emergency department. As you can see, <clears throat> the elimination half-life of DOACs are relatively short. For dabigatran, 12 to 17 hours. Rivaroxaban, Rivaroxaban, approximately 5 to 9 hours. Idoxaban, 10 to 14 hours. And Apixaban, 8 to 15 hours which basically means assuming that you take about four half-lives for most of the medications, to, most of the medication to go away, so 50%, 25%, 12.5%. The overall half-life of dabigatran which should be approximately 48 to 64 hours. Rivaroxaban should be approximately 20 to 45 hours. Adoxaban, 40 to 56, and apixaban, 32 to 45 hours. So basically, if you can basically uh, support the patient for two days, the medication should be out of the system. Of other interesting note, the dabigatran is approximately 80% renal excreted. So theoretically, you could consider dialysis. And then the final interesting characteristic I want to kind of point out is the time to peak on some of these medications. As you can see, for dabigatran, it's approximately one hour after ingestion. Rivaroxaban can be two to four hours. Doxaban, one to two hours. And apixaban, three to four hours. So this idea of using charcoal to prevent the absorption of this would only be very useful if, it was, if the ingestion occurred within the last maybe two to three hours. And as, as Dr. Kiang said, uh, trying to do endoscopy with charcoal in your stomach, I don't think you guys would like that so much. <clears throat> so so major, major bleeding definitions, as they went over earlier. Uh, any sort of major organ, including the central nervous system, uh, intracranial or epidural, a pericardial bleed, an intraarticular articular bleed, retroperitoneal, intraarticular or intramuscular bleed with a potential carpartment syndrome. Any sort of clinical overt bleeding with a decrease in hemoglobin of at least two grams. Uh, any patient that requires at least a transfusion of at least two units of blood, packed red blood cells. And any sort of intervention requiring surgical correction or emergent endoscopy. And any patient that requires any sort of vasopressor or vasoactivations to maintain their blood pressures. So our approach to the emergency department for a, treating a patient uh, experiencing a DOAC related bleed is as follows. Step one, we review. First off, Obviously, stop the anticoagulation and the antiplatelet uh, therapy. Two, review the time of last dose of the anticoagulant. This is probably the most important critical piece of information that we can gather as it affects our decision to administer a reversal agent as well as to approximate the amount, approximate the amount of DOAC still present within your system. <clears throat> Order a baseline CBC, CMP, and coagulation profile. And then maintain organ perfusion, volume resuscitation either by blood transfusion, normal saline, and potentially vasopressors, depending on the patient's clinical uh, picture. And then identify the source of bleeding. In this case, we'll certainly we'll be talking primarily about GI bleeds. And then evaluate for potential for transfusion. Step two, remove the DOAC. You can consider gastric lavage if the ingestion was very recent though I would probably consider that more for someone who attempted an overdose on a DOAC. Oral charcoal, 
But as I said, the rapid rate of absorption can kind of limit the efficacy of oral charcoal and also kind of, kind of inhibit your ability to do any sort of endos endoscopy. Dialysis, as we said, with the big trend specifically because it's 80% renally excreted. Step three, repair. So assess the need for surgery or endoscopy. And then step four, reverse. This is where we just finally decide whether if we're going to use or any sort of reversal agents for these direct or acting oral anticoagulants. You can consider four-factor PT complexes such as K-Centra, platelet transfusions for any patients with thrombocytopenia or had any patients who had recently received any sort of antiplatelet medications, recombinant factor 10A protein or otherwise indexinet, or idarusumab, which is very specific for Pradaxa. So looking at DOAC agents, DOAC reversal agents at glance, of the current DOAC reversal agents available, only adexinet is FDA approved to reverse 10A agents. Right. Idarizumab is specific only for Pradaxa. Right. Uh, the PCC3 and 4 complexes are not FDA approved for 10A reversal, but have been used prior to the advent of Indexa. And then the last one, Surapreptinag, is currently in <clears throat> phase two trials uh, and is not commercially available, but it's basically a small synthetic cation with two arginine units that will bind permanently to anti-10A uh, DOACs, thus rendering it ineffective. So it's something for us to definitely look forward to in the future, but it's currently is not available for use. So let's begin with a couple of uh, basic cases that I'll typically see in the ER. So what we have here, you have your 62-year-old male with a history of hypertension, diabetes, arthritis, and DVT taking the bigotran, presenting to my emergency department with coffee ground emesis on a Saturday night at approximately 11 o'clock after going to Fogo de Chao. His last dose of the bigotran was approximately 12 hours prior to the presentation to my emergency department. Initial vital sign, Looks clinically well. Blood pressure 132 over 78, heart rate 88. Pulse ox fine, temp fine. Hemoglobin initially, 11.7. Coagulation, CMP is normal. PT a little bit elevated, PT mildly elevated. We initiate our standard ER protocol. Two large bore IVs, O2, cardiac monitors placed. IV resuscitation initiated, IV pertemprazole, uh, bolus, and drip given. The patient is typed in screen for possible transfusion as his hemoglobin is in the 11s. GI is paged at 11 o'clock at night and consulted and planned for possible EGD first in the morning. Two hours later, as the, ER, the patient is, continues to board within my department, he has another large body hematemesis. His repeat vital signs are now showing that his blood pressure is hypotensive in the 90s. He's now tachycardic in the 100s. SpO2 temp normal. Repeats that hemoglobin shows that he's dropped down to 9.1 with a degree of hypotension. We initiate central line placement. We type and cross him for two units of red blood cells for emergent transfusion. <clears throat> and then again, we page GI, and in the case discussed, we plan to attempt to reverse the bid tran for this acute GI bleed. As we discussed, iterizumab is the FDA-approved agent for to reverse the bitran. It was mentioned earlier in his lecture, but we, there was 503 patients enrolled. In group A, 300 of one, one patients were the patients with acute life-threatening bleeds, 137 of which were GI bleeds, 98 of which were intracranial bleeds, 78 of which were traumas. Group B consisted of 202 patients requiring emergent surgeries or invasive procedures who were not actively bleeding, but they could not wait eight hours to do the surgery or the procedure, so they needed to reverse the, digabitra, uh, the bigotran prior to operating. Of interest, the average median time to cessation of bleeding for the patients within group A was 2.5 hours. The 90-day thrombotic events occurred in 6.3% of patients within group A and 7.4% of patients in group B. Likely, 
the, the difference may be because the group B patients were more post-surgical. Of interest, the mortality of both groups were similar. <clears throat> Reviewing the pharmacokinetics of adorizumab, you can see that the thrombin time and the unbound digubitran with the reverse of adorizumab. Basically, the adorizumab will bind to the bigotran permanently. Its initial half-life is approximately 45 minutes, and as you can see, after the infusion, you see a persistent decrease in both unbound digvitran and thrombin time <clears throat> at uh, one hour, two hours, four hours, 12 hours, and 24 hours post-infusion. The approximate dose of idorizumab should be five milligrams, and wholesale runs approximately about $5,000. Moving on to case two. <clears throat> Saturday night, one in the morning, 62-year-old male with a history of atrial fibrillation uh, with a history of coronary artery disease, hypertension, diverticulosis, presents with multiple bouts of dark blood per rectum today. He says, doctor, I took a picture of it. And I said, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> the last dose of the pa last patient's last dose of rivaroxaban was approximately 12 hours prior. His initial vitals show that he is hypotensive in the 80s, tachycardic in the 120s, SBO2 normal, temp normal. His initial hemoglobin is 6.6 .6 with a normal CMP and coagulation PTT normal and a mildly elevated PT. Again, two large bore IVs, O2 cardiac monitors placed. Aggressive IV fluid resuscitation initiated with normal saline. Patient has been typing cross for four units of packed red blood cells for emergency transfusion. And now GI has been paged. We'll plan for colonoscopy for possibly in the morning if the patient is stable. One hour later, the patient continues to bleed within my department. Uh, he has repeat vitals after two liters of fluid and one unit of packed red blood cells, still persistently hypotensive in the 70s, heart rate in the 130s, SpO2 temp otherwise normal. Central line is now placed, vasal pressure is initiated, the case is again discussed the GI in the middle of the night. We'll plan for, well, the plan will be for emergent colonoscopy to try to stop this bleeding, but in the meantime, you're gonna to have to take time to get the team together and have the GI doc drive in from home. So we have to initiate potential reversal therapy with Indexinet. In the New England Journal of Medicine earlier this year, they did a full study report of the Nexit Alpha for bleeding associated with factor 10A inhibitors. Of interest, they had 352 patients evaluated for major bleeding, 227 intracranial, and 90 gastrointestinal bleeds. They found that Indexinet had a 92% reduction of anti 10A activity when used against rivaroxaban and apixaban. They achieved excellent or good hemostasis in approximately 82% of patients at 12 hours. And death occurred in approximately 14% of patients, and thrombotic events occurred in approximately 10% of patients within 30 days. So looking at this table, you can see the anti 10 a activity for, for, for the um, reversal agent for both against apixaban and rivaroxaban. And as you see, anti 10 a activity is dramatically decreased during the bolus and during the infusion. But afterwards, you notice at the four hour mark, anti 10 activity goes right back up. The therapeutic half life of indexin is approximately one hour. And act anti 10 activity at about 12 hours after administ administration of the indexinate is about the same as what you would see if you just let the natural half life of the DOAC proceed. So, as you can see, at 12 hours, it's about where it should be if you didn't give the indexinate at all to begin with. So basically, you're giving the indexinate for maybe four hours of coagulation. Right. In their study, they say the reduction of anti-10 activity was not predictive of hemostatic efficacy overall, but was modestly predictive in patients with intracranial hemorrhages. But in the end, in the ED, when a patient's this unstable, we do everything we possibly can to save their life. So, in summary, very important in summary, DOACs have reasonably very short half-lives with a rapid rate of absorption. 
When dealing with Dolor Act related pleas, remember the four R's. Review, remove, repair, reverse. And consider, only consider reversal agents for Dolor Acts only in the most life-threatening of cases, not responsive or aggressive supportive treatment. Thank you very much for your time.